It is the quarter mark of the season, so report card time for both the Sabres and many of the individual players that we'll dive into today on our quarter season report card episode of the Lockdown Sabres podcast, plus a short preview later on of Sabres and Lightning. That is all ahead here on Lockdown Sabres. <laughs> Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. That includes our YouTube channel where you can watch the show. So feel free to do that with us today. Uh, head over to YouTube. And you can see the hat I'm wearing. You can see the hoodie I'm wearing. You can see all my my beautiful knickknacks behind me. The Jim Kelly ornament. That is Stu Barnes, by the way, back there. If I, I guess I've never introduced him here on the show. This is Stu Barnes in the uh, perfect perfect time of the year for some some red and black. Um, we've got a lot to get to on today's show, and that includes our quarter season port report card for the Sabers and also many of their players, which means. It's easy. It's an easy math equation to do some on pace for stats, which I love doing. So we'll go through that. What are some of the Sabres on pace for uh, this season? Stay tuned for that, and we'll evaluate whether or not I think they will hit that goal or this total uh, that they're on pace for this season. So all of that is ahead here on the podcast at Sneaky Joe Sports to follow me on Twitter if you want to get involved with the show that way, or you could tweet at our uh, Twitter account, which is at Locked On Sabres. Um, or you can always leave us a comment on our YouTube channel, uh, which is always good as well. And I had uh, a recent comment on our last YouTube video about Tage Thompson and his development and just how it's getting so absurd. And I had someone in my uh, mentions at Scary Crazy Man with two N's. He was making the case that I think Thompson should be, I think I might have mentioned in the episode, Thompson's approaching Eichel level and he wanted to be there to say, I think Thompson's on Eichel's level and maybe we'll have more of a conversation about that a little bit later on and throughout the season. Um, but there's a lot of hype around Tage Thompson right now. And you will not believe if you haven't heard him yet, what he is on pace for uh, this season that is coming up a little bit later in the show. Uh, let's start though. Today's show with our uh, a report card on the Sabres and that begins with the record. 9-12, and 12. that is good for 18 points uh, this season so far. 7th in the Atlantic, 7th out of 8, 7 points back from the wild card, that is 8 back from the division. And it's on pace for 72 points. I wrote down all of my on pace for stats except the Sabres point total. I'm just going to double check that, that is correct. 72 points is what the Sabres are on pace for, and that is is bad. That is pretty darn awful. Now, a lot of point projections have them more so in the low 80s, and that might be more realistic that they'll be better than what they've showed so far. And I would agree with that. I think the Sabres are better than their record. I don't think they're a crazy amount better, but I do think better. Uh, the Sabres in expected goals for this season are 19th. They are 9th in Corsi 4 percentage, so basically their shot share. They are 22nd and five-on-five five save percentage. Now, that's where they take a bit of a hit. But that might be more of a defenseman stat and an injury stat, if you will, because of how many injuries they've had in the blue line, than it is a goalie stat. Part of it's the goaltending, but if you look at save percentage above expected, so basically, how well is the goalie doing based on what's in front of him, based on the sh quality of shots that he is getting? And the Sabres in that category, save percentage above expected, are 19th in the NHL, minus 0.07%. They are as close to zero as you could basically get. So, essentially, what does that mean? But in layman's terms, it means the Sabres goalies make all the saves they should and nothing more. They are not going to bail the team out. They are not going to put the team on their back. They are going to do exactly what is put in front of them, and that is it. And in some ways, that's an improvement. In other ways, it's still not good enough. 
for what you would want from the Sabres in that you would like to have goaltenders that can steal a game here or there. And that is just not the Sabres goaltending situation. But the save percentage number you would hope comes up with the uh, the healthiness of the defenseman now that Matias Samuelson is back, now that uh, Henry Okiharu is back as well, and they have a full stable of defensemen. There's also a trade rumor involving uh, a defenseman in the Sabres, but we'll talk about that on our next episode uh, after the Sabres and Lightning game. So, all in all, I think the Sabres would get a C plus, in my opinion, for the start of the season. A C plus because they have not reached the goals and are not on their way to reaching the goals that fans have set out for them, that the organization has set out for them. But I don't want to crush them because I do think they've gotten a little unlucky with some of their results. I do like the style of hockey that they're playing. They're a very fun style up and down the ice. Um, and some of the individual success, uh, I think, is going a long way to helping out as well. But you can't get into the Bs and you can't get into the As unless you see the on-ice uh, You translate to the standings. And when you're seventh out of eight, you can't C plus is being generous. I think a lot of people would have them maybe a lot lower than that. Um, but I'm going to give them a C plus because I have been impressed with a lot of their play. If you take away, you know, what the end of the game is, you just try to evaluate, okay, the possession and how many chances are they getting? And do they really deserve to lose a lot of these games that they are losing? I think they look a little bit more favorable uh, for me, at least. And that is with saying all on top of that, that I recognize right now, this is a one line team. This, this team will only succeed and will only win games if Tage Thompson, Jeff Skinner, and Alex Tuck are scoring goals. Not only that, this team is a one-pair team for the most part. Owen Power does keep their second pair above water, even then some. But it's a one-pairing team. You saw the results when Matias Samuelson went out, and it was bad. And he, otherwise... They're pretty good with Matias Samuelson in there as a steady, steady force on the top pair. So I like that we found five players here that are all worth relying upon. Thompson, Skinner, Tuck, Samuelson, and Dahlin. But there's not much past that right now that it feels like night in and night out, you can count on it. You can count on Dylan Cousins to create opportunities. You can count on Victor Olison to finish, especially on the power play. And you can count on Owen Power. You can count on Owen Power to drive possession and be a very good playmaker on the back end. And that's probably it. End of list. Everything else, wild card. Up in the air, you have no idea what you're going to get night in and night out. So C-plus is what I'm going with for the Sabres as a team in the first 21 games of the season. When we come back, how about some of the players, the individual players? And also, what are they on pace for? I love on pace for stats. We'll do that uh, when we come back here on the Lockdown Savers podcast. We are brought to you by Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you want to listen up because right now, Lockdown Savers listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is your biggest offer of the year, and you don't want to to miss it. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe home hole security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect that alert that only you know uh when it th- that you only know when a threat is real, and even hazardous sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. With the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Jody Biasi back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Fun time of year. I love a good benchmark. Now we're at 21 games. At 42, we'll do the same thing, and uh, likely we'll do it at uh, what's uh, 63. At 63 games as well. No, that's not right. 21. 41. That's what I did there. Uh, because we are one game past the, uh, the, the quarter mark of the season. Um, so anyways, uh, to the on pace for stats, which we always have fun with. And I love doing here on the locked on Sabres podcast. And 
Mm-hmm. We're going to try to guess at, I'm going to try to guess at whether or not these players will reach this benchmark for the season, this total. And we'll start with Tage Thompson. He's been the superstar this year for the Sabres. He leads them in points. He leads them in goals. He has been unbelievable. And Tage Thompson is on pace for 52 goals and 52 assists, 104 points. I don't think Thompson will get all the way there. I don't think he'll get into the 100-point territory, and I don't think he'll get to the 50-point territory. So I would have him coming underneath of this total, but I do think that he's going to be at a very high number in the 80s and the 90s. And so far, 13 goals, 13 assists, 26 goals in 21 games played. Uh, I'm all about Tage Thompson this year. He's been unbelievable. He's been a rock star. That contract always already looking great. I would guess he probably comes into the mid 80s, high 80s, maybe into the low 90s in terms of points, uh, which is, again, a big jump from even last year. Uh, A plus. A plus. You can't do anything but an A plus. For Tage Thompson. He has been that good. Rasmus Dahlin. Rasmus Dahlin is on pace for 32 goals, 60 assists, and 92 points. Dahlin has been a Norris caliber defenseman so far this year. In fact, he is fifth in the odds at our partners over at Bet Online. Eight goals, 15 assists, 23 points in 20 games, above a point a game uh, for the year. He's averaging 26 minutes of ice time. Now, he looked. His role, by the way, was a little bit different when Matias Samuelson was out. So he's done a lot of this without his usual defense partner. When Samuelson is out there, Dahlin is scoring goals. He is jumping up into the play. He's jumping up into the high slot where a lot of his goals are coming from. And it's why he's on pace for 30 right now. So with Samuelson back, I actually believe Dahlin is going to crack a point a game. I think he's going to be above a point a game. He's been that good. He gets all the power play minutes. He gets all the five on five minutes. He plays with the best players. He's unbelievable. He's really taken a step forward this year in terms of his passing. His vision is always there. He's a little bit more confident with his stick handling and his deking also and with his shot. So he always had the vision. He always had the skating, but now the deking, there's more confidence. The shooting, there's more confidence. And the full scope of Darlene's offensive game is really rounding into form. So I love Darlene. I think an A-plus is warranted here for Rasmus Darlene this season. Next in our list here, Alex Tuck. 40 goals, 44 assists is what he is on pace for. 84 points. Tuck, 10 goals and 11 assists, 21 points in 21 games. A point-a-game player for this season. I don't think Tuck will get all the way there to a point a game. I don't want to say it's impossible, though. I feel like he's got it in him. His career year will be around there. Maybe that's about to happen. But as of now, Tuck's career high in points is 32. Or, excuse me, 52. Jeez, I almost read that wrong. 52 is his career high in points. And, you know, he had 38 in a shortened season in 50 games. He had 33 in 55 games. So... The 60-point mark is maybe going to be his average going forward. And when that's your average, you know, you'll have a year where you get into the 80s. He's on his way this year. I'll project he gets a little bit short of that. I'll give Alex Tuck an A-. minus. The reason I'm going to give him an A-, minus, there were a couple of games in the midpoint there where he wasn't playing with Alex, with uh, Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner, where he really disappeared. He disappeared, and he had some really bad turnovers in that Vegas game against the Golden Knights. Um, he was really bad in that game. So he hasn't been unstoppable unbelievable he's meshing well uh a minus i don't want to give a plus to all these guys also which is part of this so i'll go a minus for alex tuck jeff skinner is next up in our list jeff skinner on the season has nine goals 12 assists 21 points he is on pace for 34 goals and 82 points a point a game uh, that would be a career high for uh, Jeff Skinner when it comes to points scored. Uh, his actual career high in points is 63. So he's on track to obliterate that total. And part of that reason why is the assists. Skinner has never had more than 32 assists in a season. And you got to go back to his rookie campaign and at 18 years old to find when Skinner had 32 assists. Since then, he has never had more than 30. 
He had 30 last year, actually, for the Sabres. That was the second highest mark of his career. His 40-goal campaign for the Sabres, he only had 23. This year, he is already at 12. He is on pace for 45 assists. I don't think he'll get all the way there, but that is the biggest reason why his point total, I think, this year is going to be one of the highest marks of his career. It's because he is scoring goals, but also the assists are through the roof. And a lot of that is Thompson. A lot of that is Tuck. But Skinner has done a very nice job in connecting with those two, finding them, and kind of developing his game a little bit and changing his game a little bit offensively. So Jeff Skinner gets an A. He is doing exactly what is asked of him. He is not asked to be a two-way player, but in the offensive zone, he is having arguably the best season of his career from a stats uh, standpoint. Next up on our list, Dylan Cousins. Dylan Cousins, he's having a pretty nice season. Five goals, 10 assists, 15 points in 21 games. He is on pace for 57 points. And that would be nice. People, everyone would be happy, I think, with 57 points from Dylan Cousins. But here's where I see what I see from Dylan Cousins. He is unbelievable at creating plays. He's one of the best zone entry men in the NHL. He's a very good stick handler. He has good vision. He's a very good passer. He's got a lot of good playmaking abilities. But... I think something that's going to stop Cousins from being a star player at any point in his career, a superstar player, the shot. The shot is not that good. He gets opportunities from prime scoring opportunities, and the goalie makes it look easy. He just doesn't have the release that elite scorers do in the NHL, and that is represented in his shooting percentage. Cousins is at a 9.6 shooting percentage for the season. That is 11th on the Buffalo Sabres, and it is lower than almost all of their key offensive contributors. Tuck, Olofsson, Middlestack, Jurgensen, Skinner, Paterka, Thompson, Quinn, Darlene, even Bryson is ahead of him. Now, Bryson's only taken nine shots on the, lead, on the year, so that's a little bit harsh to him. But 9.6 is not a very good mark for Dylan Cousins. And I'm believing that that's going to be him. That's going to be Dylan Cousins. In, th in fact, last year, Dylan Cousins had an 8.1 shooting percentage. And the year before that, he had a 6.5 shooting percentage. So he will get goals throughout his career just based on him being around the net, him creating opportunities, and having the puck in the offensive zone. But I don't think this is a guy that you're lining up for one-timers on the wing. Uh, his goals will have to be more opportunistic than uh, an Olsen, for instance, who is just more of a, you know, hired goal scorer here. So Dylan Cousins. Uh, I would give Dylan Cousins an A-, minus, though. I think he's doing everything you ask of him. The zone entries have been so key for the Sabres. A- minus for Dylan Cousins. Victor Olofsson. Uh, just run through some on pace for stats here before we take a timeout. Victor Olofsson's on pace for 41 goals. Casey Middlestat is on pace for 48 points. It's pretty nice. It's probably better than you would think uh, Casey Middlestat was on pace for. Now, he's getting a lot of minutes. So the points per 60 minutes on Middlestat is actually a lot lower than is deserved. And then J.J. Paterka, Jack Quinn, Owen Power. As a collective unit, little disappointing. You would have hoped one of the three, just one, one of the three, would be in the Calder conversation. And maybe Owen Power is. Owen Power should be. This is the way the difference in the opinion comes. Power should be. He has been so effective on the blue line. But that award is given to players to put up big offensive uh, point seasons. And right now, Power is on pace for 34 points. And he has not scored yet. So he's not going to be in the Calder conversation unless he gets the point totals going. And because Dalene takes so many minutes and power play minutes, I don't think that's going to happen for Power. Um, I've liked Power, though, a lot. He has been very calm, cool, collected in his own end, just as was trademarked for him. He's been unbelievable in that regard. He's really done this in spite of who his defense partner has been. It was Yoki Haru, now it's back to Yoki Haru, and he's had his struggles. And it was Kel Clegg for a huge part of the middle por portion of the season uh, to this stage. So, Power, I'm going to give a B plus. I think he's been tremendous. I'm going to give the other two rookies, though, uh, different grades. I'm going to give J.J. Paterka a B-plus as well. I think he's been very effective. And I'm going to give Jack Quinn a B-minus, only because the results are not there yet. But he is getting chances. He is playing well at 5-on-5. Five five. A lot of his numbers there look good. And it feels like there's a dam about to break for Jack Quinn. So nothing bad uh, on any of those guys. If I were to give a bad grade out to anybody, I would be back in the Cs for Henry Yoki Haru. I would give him just a straight C. 
I would give Vinny Hino Stroza a C minus. I think he's been bad for the Sabres so far this season after I thought he was really good for the Sabres last year. And I think I have to give one F. And that F has to go to Peyton Krebs. He's been the most disappointing player of the Sabres campaign. You got to call a spade a spade. It's been bad. Three assists, no goals, and 17 games played. He's only playing about 12 minutes a night. And to his defense, he's not really being put in the best situations to flourish. He has played a lot of his minutes this season with fourth liners. He's been playing on the Gergensons and uh, a Poso line a lot. He has been p- playing in a lot of defensive zone starts. If you look at Krebs so far this year, his most common teammates in terms of minutes uh, at, ends up being... Oh, sorry. I'm looking at his whole career. I'm looking for... Okay, here we go. Krebs' career... Or Krebs' season uh, in terms of who he's playing with. The most minutes he's played with is Zemgis Gergensen's at 88 minutes, 5-on-5. Five five. Second is Owen Power. So on the blue line, he's getting some help. Uh, but forwards after that. Victor Olofsson. Okay, not too shabby at uh, 61 minutes. Kyle Oposo at 54 minutes. Casey Middlestad at 48. Rasmus Asplund at 46. He has really not played with Cousins much. He has not played with Paterka much. He has not played with Tuck Skinner or uh, Thompson really at all. He's only played three minutes with Thompson. So I don't know. I might want to see Granado try to fire him up and put him up there in the top six and see if he can get him going. Because F has to be the grade for Peyton Krebs. He's given the Sabres nothing this season. And I haven't seen many signs that that's about to change. And now he's at a point where he's a healthy scratch. We'll talk more about that uh, coming up next. But an F for Peyton Krebs. Don't want to do it, but I feel like I got to. And then quickly, the goaltending. As a whole, I kind of want to give it a, a, a C-. minus. It's been better, but not to where you want it to be. Comrie is a big part of that. If I were to split them up, I would give Comrie a D plus. He has not been nearly as good as what was built up. And I'd give Craig Anderson a B minus. Anderson's been fine. Uh, 917 save percentage. He's given the Sabres what they needed uh, as a stabilizing force. Comrie not playing well, and then Comrie being out. Um, so I would give I would give Anderson a B minus. He's been kind of the saving grace for the Sabres in that. All right. Time out here. And when we come back, we will preview the Sabres and the Lightning, including a betting preview of uh, Monday night's game. That's ahead here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. And when we do that betting preview, we will do that at betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting sports information, stats, news, and analysis. They have sports podcasts as well. You can find those at BetOnline. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. If you want to look up uh, fantasy stuff, I'm good. I love doing that uh, at BetOnline. Also, World Cup odds, you can look at that. Uh, You can look at World Cup specials, stage of elimination bets, uh, some prop bets on uh, specific games. Uh, You can do as specific as how many matches will go to penalties once they get to the round knockout stage. Two and a half, by the way, is the line on that one. There's a ton of great betting information uh, and uh, betting opportunities at BetOnline for the the FIFA World Cup, for the NHL season, for the NFL, of course, and for uh, the NBA. So head over to uh, BetOnline.net. Use it. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. And now we are going to look at the Sabres matchup with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Sabres hosting the Lightning on Monday night. It is a tough matchup for them. And after losing on Friday, it's going to be very tough to get back into the win column uh, with this opponent. And unsurprisingly, the Sabres are an underdog. Now, they're actually not as big of underdog an underdog as I would have thought they were. If you look at the Sabres odds for tonight at our partners at Bet Online, the Sabres are plus 126 on the money line to win this game outright. Uh, I am not in favor of that bet. I think they should be more of an underdog, and I would actually take the Lightning in this game. I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but at minus 139, I would be on the Lightning. The puck line for the Sabres is minus 190 at plus a goal and a half. So to lose the game uh, by one or to win it at minus 190 and the Lightning to cover the puck line at plus 165. That would be my bet of the night if I must do it. My bet of the night would be Lightning on the puck line plus 165. The over-under in this game 
is six and a half goals. Now, for tonight's lineup and why the over-under is a little bit interesting, Brian Elliott is starting for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Noted Sabre killer, uh, Brian Elliott. He has a 19-4 and record against the Sabres in his career. That is the highest win percentage of any goaltender ever against the Sabres. Also, Brian Elliott has a 935 save percentage against the Sabres for his career. That is the highest of any goalie in history against the Sabres uh, that has played at least 20 games. So Elliott versus Lukanen. Ukapeka Lukanen back in the lineup for the Sabres after a very strong performance on Wednesday night for UPL. So I'm a little optimistic and the backup goal, he probably plays into why the Lightning are an underdog or are only a slight favorite, I should say, uh, in this game. But I am going to go with the Lightning on those team bets for tonight. Uh, if I have one prop bet, I'm going back to the Tage Thompson shooting gallery well. Uh, I lost it on Wednesday, but I'm going back to it. You stick with the process, not with the results in this case. Uh, Thompson is over three and a half shots on goal at minus 157. I am on the over on that one. Other lineup notes for the Sabres Lightning game. Uh, Rasmus Asplund is back in, which means Vinny Hino Stroza is out. That also means that Peyton Krebs is still out. I just talked about Krebs on our report card and – it's just not going well. And now he's the 14th forward. He's two injuries away from being back in the lineup. We're at a point where he might as well be in Rochester. What good is it doing him sitting in the press box? Maybe he had him send him to Rochester, build his confidence a little bit. You heard from me last segment what I would do. I would put him up there with the top guys. Give him a couple games. And if it doesn't work out, then you throw him down in Rochester and build his confidence. But I would put him up there with Cousins. That would be my ideal line mate. That's tough because those are two pass-happy guys that neither of which really like to shoot all that much, neither of which are good at shooting all that much. But them playing off each other, creating opportunities, I don't even need Krebs to score goals, but just having getting him to have the puck in the offensive zone. He's had so many defensive zone starts this year playing on checking lines that a breath of fresh air for him would be play with an offensive line. And I'm not putting splitting up that top line with talk, uh, Thompson and, and Skinner. So... Cousins, Cousins, maybe Olafson on the other side. Uh, maybe you throw Paterka up there with them, but I would try to get Krebs going with Dylan Cousins to have them feed off each other, create some zone opportunities. Um, and ideally, you'd like to have a good goal scorer. Olafson's the one who fits on the other side of that because those two are not good shooters. But that's what I would do with Krebs. Um, but he's going to be out again here on Monday against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that is going to do it for us here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Thanks for everybody for uh, tuning in and checking out the show. Uh, when you're done with us, which is about now, head over to our Locked on Sports Today show. Uh, it is the b- biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and also the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. We will talk to you tomorrow here on the Locked on Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase.